CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. We're going to show you how to properly get your PowerBoss set up to connect a coax security camera or an analog security camera or a BNC security camera, which are all one and the same. They're basically cameras that have a BNC pigtail on them and a 12 volt power connection. This is a 12 volt power box. Make sure the voltage and amperage of your power box, you know what it is. Most cameras these days, like even this modern security camera is a 12 volt camera. If you plug in a 24 volt power box into this or power supply, you'll fry it. The barrel connector is usually the indication that you have a 12 volt camera. You can always check the specs of your camera with the label on it and it'll state on there what power supply it needs. And this one says 12 volts and this line here where it's actually dotted on one side or dashed on one side and solid on the other means it's DC current and this takes one amp. So let's get started. I have a power box here to properly set it up. You need a screwdriver, a hand driven one, Phillips screwdriver and a uh, power pigtail. This is a male power pigtail. First, you're going to unscrew your power box. Once you have your screws removed, put them aside in somewhere safe, and then let's open up the power box. You'll note the power box has a few different things in here. The main connections we need to connect our power pigtail to is right here. Now there are two ways to go about this. If you're using a Siamese wire that is already pre-tipped, such as this wire, this is pre-tipped cables, pre-made Siamese, meaning it comes from the factory with pre-crimped cables. You cannot cut these, you cannot redo the connections. You use the cable as is, you don't add another cable on top of it to extend it. So for these to connect in there, obviously you can't cut these cables, so you need to put one of these power pigtails through the power box into the circuit here. If you had a cable that comes from a box, it'll look like this. You have to tip the video portion, which is the BNC, and then you have to actually take out the power wire from here and tip that. I'll show you what that power wire looks like independently in a second. So that's what this power wire looks like when you're taking it out of a Siamese roll. It has a red portion to it and a black portion to it. Red is usually connected to the positive terminals and black is connected into the negative terminals. And you have to be very careful to make sure you don't have too much copper and it doesn't go from the positive to the negative terminal or from positive to another positive because it'll short out the power box or even damage your camera, which will never be covered by any sort of warranty. So keep in mind when you're connecting a power box together, it's a, usually a task for professionals. When you're doing it yourself, you're taking on the responsibility that you understand the dexterity that's involved in connecting the connections properly so you don't damage the power box and or your cameras. Here is a zoomed in view of the power box. Basically, the way these rails are set up, the bottom is negative, it says that here, and the top is positive. So when you're connecting your wire, coming in from your cable, either it be from a pigtail that you're connecting to make your job easier, so you can use these to connect to your pre-made Siamese, or the bare wire coming in from your uh, Siamese cabling itself that's uncrimped. You wanna make sure you properly connect the correct wires. On the power boxes, usually there's a punch out hole. You can punch this out using a screwdriver and uh, then you can actually thread these out of the power box for convenience. In my case, I'm not going to be threading them out. I'm just gonna show you how to connect these properly. I don't have a lot of copper showing, and let's see if this amount of copper is decent enough or not. So the bottom is negative, that's where the black one will connect, and the top one is positive, that's where the red one will connect. So you make sure you have enough wire spaced out apart. You basically unscrew the terminals,
using only a hand-driven screwdriver like I'm doing it, make sure the cable is secure, tug on it to make sure it doesn't come loose. Now the reason I'm actually putting the, the black and the red wire on opposite ends is because I don't want to accidentally have these leads touch the incorrect side, otherwise it'll short out the power box or the camera. And a lot of customers don't understand that this skill, putting in these wires is su super important that you are very careful because if your wire is loose or it touches the wrong side or it touches another positive side, you're gonna have a huge short, so shorting situation which will immediately blow out the power box. And that's not covered by any warranty. We test all power boxes before we ship them out to make sure they're turn on and they're operational. And if you happen to have a damaged power box as a result of improper installation, it will not be covered by any warranty. So here, I've got my power box ready now to connect to a camera. So the next step would be, of course, to run these through. I'm not doing that in this case. The step after that would be to connect this to an AC 110 volt current. So this is the power outlet on the side of the box. The next step is to connect that here and then connect this to power. So now I'm here ready to connect my power box to my system. Obviously the whole intent is here is to get a power box connected to your system. On the right hand side, I have a camera. It's a coax camera because it has B and C inputs on it, which I showed you before, same exact camera. I've got a cable and I've got a power box. So then let's power up the power box. Before you do that, make sure you open the power box and confirm there's nothing metal touching the inside of the power box. Any of the leads kind of just bouncing around, that'll fry it. Then plug in your 110 AC cable into the side of the power box and push it in firmly until this light lights up. Depending on your power box, the light may be seen through the cover or not. You just have to then open it and make sure you can see a green light light up. This power box is an 18 port 20 amp. The next step after that, once you've confirmed you've got a green light, there might be switches one or two inside your power box. This one happens to have two. Push this in the on position and the rails will light up. So this tells you your power box is functioning. And this is how we do a test on our power boxes to confirm it's turning on before we ship them to you because then this wire coming out of it will have 12 volt DC up to 1.1 amp, depending on the model of your power box. Once you got that ready, let me show you how to connect all this together. Pretend you have this cable coming out of the knockouts. Never leave your power box like this. It'll slice this cable through and cause lots of other issues that you don't want to have. And there's, that's, that's an electro electrocution risk as well. So how do you connect it together with the camera? First, orient your cable the correct way. If you have a pre-made wire or you're crimping your own wire, make sure the DC jack, the female, this is what that is, that goes towards the power box side that connects into my power box. And then on the camera side, this is a DC plug, this is a male end, connects into the camera's DC connection. Now you connect the video connection, this is B and C, female, from the side that's connected to the camera on the power end together. Now you've got a B and C video connection. So at this moment now, power box is sending power to the camera and there's video connection hooked up only on one side. Then I bring in my DVR, connected to my DVR, the video that's on the DVR side of the cable. Once you do that, your DVR should pop up with the video from your camera. And if your camera happens to have a mic built in and it happens to be HD over coax like ours, you'll even be able to hear audio from it if the camera has a built-in mic on it. And that's pretty much it. That's how you set up a BNC or analog security camera system using a power box and pre-made cabling. Now, why should you use a power box? The question comes from many customers, why should they spend the money? Well, number one, it simplifies installation by using up only one 110 volt outlet from your surge suppressor or power backup. And that controls all of your cameras. If you had a power backup with it, with a battery built in, you can actually safeguard your system from mitigate the risk of lightning strikes and uh, brownouts damaging your system. 
that's one. Two is it provides clean power usually. So you can actually use the terminals on it to provide proper power going to your cameras. If you didn't want to use a power box and you had only like one or four cameras, you're trying to save some cost, you can certainly use a power adapter. That's what that looks like. But then you'll need four of these. You can't just use one of these and use a power splitter. To power a modern camera these days that has tons of IR or motorized zoom lenses like these cameras because they won't get enough amperage going to them. So that's why you need to use the power, power box with proper amperage to provide up to 1.1 amps at least to the camera so they can properly work. Otherwise, if you just got one camera, no problem. You just use this. And instead of the connection from the wire going to the power box, it would just connect in here and this would connect to your AC out. Now keep in mind, one thing I did not do was I did not take the power connection from the power box and connect it into the DVR. That's a big no-no. It won't power any DVR. There's not enough amperage there. So you just, it's only meant for security cameras. That's all. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's detailed to provide you all that you need to get started setting up your own analog security camera system or CCTV camera system. If you have any questions, Feel free to contact us if you've purchased from us. We do provide free support to customers who've actually purchased from CCTV Camera World. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.